welcome to this update on my ridiculous lalians as requested by Matt by Nature. So thank you very much, Matt, for your request. A very, very nice subject for me to cover as these are one of my favorite category of orchids for many, many reasons, which probably will be disclosed as I talk you through what we are going to be looking at. I have not pulled all my ridiculous lalias for reasons, but I will be updating you also on the ones that I have scattered, let's say, indoors and then what I have not pulled, those that are living outdoors. The reason being, indoors I am trying to make sure that the ones that I have that are weak in recovery, hoping to gain some strength. If I bring them outside, I might jostle them, jiggle them, move them in their pots and could compromise root growth. Especially with my Angareri here, you can see it is in dire straits. I don't have really anything to show for. Very, very nervous about the single new growth that it's trying to grow. That thing has stalled for over six, seven months. I'm not getting really any root growth. I have root nubbins on that orchid, just sustaining it barely, but there's no way I'm bringing it outside. It is definitely in no position condition to be repotted. Same as with my Lilliputana, I have lost a piece. It is desiccated and lying in the pot. And that one as well is in dire straits. I'm very concerned about its survival as well. It was trying to grow roots and I was super excited. And since it's been in the pot, it's slowly starting to decline. All I'm trying to do here is maintain humidity around the base of the orchid and hopefully get at least what's left in the pot to recover. The one I got from you, Matt, is the Vasconcelosiana, and that is growing a new root. The new growth that it is developing is getting really, really big, and it is ready to be potted up, just I haven't gotten around to it. That one will also still stay indoors while it recovers. The other one I got from you was a Santhina, doing okay. The new growth that it actually came with, as we suspected, that had snapped, so it's just slowly declining and deteriorating, but the roots it came with are doing okay and I haven't lost any of the viable roots and I'm very hopeful about this one. It really could be potted up, but it's the wrong time of year. And then I have my Millery, the one I really, really want to survive, also indoors. It's growing a new growth. It matured a pathetic little stress growth, but it is starting to produce some roots. That is why that one is inside. I'm really hoping that the new growth is going to give it more strength. The Entsvelsii as well, it is really struggling. I think I have two pieces in this pot, but one new growth at least grew to somewhat of size and that is producing roots. Hence, it is also indoors getting babied. The Brigieri is also not solid in the pot. So with all the wind I've been having, that is staying inside. It is growing one new growth, which makes me very, very hopeful. This orchid is supposed to be very vigorous, but I'm not going to get greedy. I don't see any desiccation on the leaves or the other pseudobulbs. The roots it started to grow when I potted it up are probably doing their job, and this orchid is just getting settled and established. But one new growth, huh, I'll take it. And then the single bulb of the Lelia Blumenshinii that miraculously grew another little growth Look at the size of that growth. It's pretty big. It's in its teeny tiny little pot, growing new roots and another root nubbin starting as well. The mother plant, I pulled that just to show you how she is doing. <laughs> this one is just the cutest from a single tiny bulb. And this is what makes it so interesting about these ridiculous lalias that a single bulb with absolutely no roots that fell off when I potted up the mother plant <laughs> produces a growth that has real substance to it. And yet my Lilliputana that was quite large, I would say, was growing roots, is slowly collapsing. That is the challenge of these ridiculous ladies that I thoroughly enjoy. The smaller their structures are, the harder they are to have them recover. And as I say that, I think about my Angareri and <laughs> it's got large structures and it is just not recovering. So this is why I have such an affinity for these ridiculous lalias. They are teaching me so much just by observing them, trying to rescue them. And some of them, as I grow them successfully, they're teaching me other things. So let's go to the blooming alley and have a look at the ones I have not pulled there either for reasons. So... 
according to my opinion, the ones that are outside that I haven't pulled, they are partly in recovery, but strong enough to be outside getting acclimated to the elements because long term, I want all my Rapiculus Lelias to live outdoors. And that is why I bought them. They take up a little space and they don't need the indoor space. But we can see, for example, that the Kolnagoi has matured its first growth with me. That's looking absolutely gorgeous. The Biensis has just matured a growth and nothing further from it, but it's looking very, very good. Esalkeana did bloom, so it's kind of in the intermediate phase of resting. My Flava Solina also matured two new growths. Never bloomed for me, but as long as it keeps gaining strength, I'm okay with that. My Mantecarie is growing a new growth. I haven't pulled that to show you because the root growth is important to me and it is not quite stable in the pot. It is quite a large Rapiculus Lelia and I don't want it to get unstable. Those roots are important. Guanhense is also maturing a beautiful new growth. That has developed. It is looking fabulous considering I only had two little bulbs at the back and that funky little cakey looking part where the bifoliate structure comes out. Very happy to see that. The broad day looks like it's leaning in the pot, but it's straighter than it would appear in the image. I just have two growths growing, but the one right at the far end is not looking very, very good. The one that is closest to us is looking fabulous even though not as large as it could be but it's growing roots and that is important that one could be on the tipping point of maybe falling out of the pot if i moved it that's why it is where it is right now i did not move it the sangiloba same thing i'm not moving it because it's growing roots and it matured one new growth for me Sorry about the dust on the leaves. Cleaning leaves is not a priority at this point in time. Any kind of little jiggle, of course, I would be abrading the roots, so that is why it looks a mess. But that growth is looking fabulous, and the root system, I'm happy seeing what I am seeing. Another one I'm not moving, but very relieved to see that the sheath is cracking at the base. Super important for this Rupestris to get its new growth on because it is so loose in the pot. Of course, for that reason, I'm not moving it. And I'm certain that it's holding on by a single root. So that new growth is very important to me. The Alvarenguensis, of course, bloomed for us in spring. She's in a mode of rest. I'm losing two back bulbs, but I don't see any concern there whatsoever. She did a beautiful bloom display for us in spring. First time bloomer in my collection. And well, it's the nature of the game that these guys will lose some of their structures somewhere down the road. The Pops TI is impressing me. I have two new growths. We saw that in a recent Orchid Chores video. The Flava is still only showing me one new growth. That was also a close-up in the Orchid Chores video. Happy to see that Microspata is growing one new growth. Also not solid in the pot, but a new growth nonetheless. Also looking a little bit dirty. Again, I am not moving this Orchid because whatever's happening in the pot has to happen without me interfering in it. My large Kautskiana, the one that I just recently received, it is growing roots in the pot. I'm very happy to see that, but the new growth that it came with is losing the leaf. Okay, that's part of acclimating. That's part of the stress as well from the repot and the transition into this media. It's surprising me though that it's losing that leaf as opposed to older leaves. Still, the structure and the pseudobulb will remain and it will still continue to do its job growing new roots. That is the most important thing. Eventually, a new growth will replace and cover up a pseudobulb without a leaf. And here we have another reason why I love these Rapiculus Lelias so much, because their blooms are so cute. <laughs> so, Lelia Gracilis, blooming for the first time. I got her as a gift from the Orchid Room. Melissa Walker and Michael McCarthy. She is my 2.0. My first one didn't survive. Again, small structures, if the plant is weak, very, very difficult to get them through and get them to survive. Very healthy little orchid that arrived. And here we are almost two years later and in bloom. And then here to the right is my Gillianii. Look at that. Tiny little orchid, beautiful bloom, slightly larger than the Gracilis. <laughs> But in proportion to the size of the orchid, I think it's just adorable. And she is growing nice, purdy roots. You see all the proportions about these Rapiculus Lelias. They are just amazing. 
tiny chubby little bulbs and then roots come out like this it's like a statement they are just such they just have such determination about them absolutely love them and there's something i wanted to bring up before we move on to the next ones you see how short their bloom spikes are when i showcased my spring blooming rapiculus lalias the flava the alvarenguenses i showcased how tall the spikes are of those rapiculus lalias because of the time of year that they bloom they have to find their pollinators and they are growing while all the grassy terrain around them the clusters of grass are also at their peak they're lush because there's a lot more water around during the spring in this area where they live as opposed to the summer and now you can see the summer blooming rapiculus lalias do not have to fight with that tall grass to attract pollinators and for that reason their spikes are much much shorter. So without having to make an indication of every single rapiculus lalia with what care it requires, if you know the length of the flower spike it's going to get you can pretty much put them into two categories. A lot of water for spring and less water for summer out in nature right now where they would be living they are absolutely exposed to the elements in full sun with all the wind and all the heat that that area provides for them this is not to say that i do not water my summer blooming rapiculus lalias because in culture things are a little bit different but we can back off based on what they are doing. We don't give them as much water. For the rapiculus lalia with short spikes, they start growing their roots at this time of year when there's hardly any water available. They find certain dew points in the crevices of the rocks that they live on. So the roots are extending to go to that area where they will get only sustained by morning dew or evening dew. The rest is no water. It is only then when it comes around the autumn winter time that water can increase or they go into a rest mode because they're not growing any new growth. So I'm sorry I just went off on a tangent there but if you saw that video or haven't seen the video about the spring blooming rapiculus lalias I will link it in the description and the distinction of care with regards to the length of the spike will give you a great indication of what a rapiculus lalia needs based on the length of the spike, meaning that is the time for blooming and what in nature they're getting or not getting. I hope you didn't mind that tangent. Let's move on to some that have something super interesting going on and I'll talk you through them. I have three Lelia Regentii, which I can explain. <laughs> okay, these two come from the same shipment from Floralia in Brazil. They were one and the same plant back in the day and they split apart when I potted them up. Anyway, so I put them in separate pots and I can see that there's one doing a lot better than the other one. Getting the same treatment arrived at the same time. So this is Leila Regentii right here, getting two new growths. So I've got one new growth coming there and one new growth coming right here, right by my finger. The other piece has been struggling a little bit. It is not in lava rock and ceramis. This one is with grit and ceramis, which means it could possibly be staying far too wet or it was the weaker end of the pieces. But here we have now finally two new growths growing. That is super important because I was concerned about this orchid for the longest. And back here I have one new growth growing. So this one's picking up. I'm very pleased to see that, muy importante. And then here is one that I got as a gift from Luca Orchidin, as a gift after I placed an order for just rapiculus lalias. And this one's doing great. One of these two pieces already bloomed for me, this one hasn't bloomed for me yet, but it is growing two new growths right here. Let me get rid of the invasive fern. So there we go, that is awesome. Another new growth right there. This one is taking off and doing superbly. You see, even if they don't bloom, I love them so much. One of my cutie cutie favorites that I'm so glad that made it is my little Itambana. Look at the tiny sizes of these growths. And this one still made it despite being in poorly, poorly condition and having tiny little structures. What a relief because I love this little orchid. So there's a new growth coming right <laughs> right there too cute 
<laughs> and one a little bit further along already, right in there. Goodness me, when this one chucks out its roots, it looks like it's one of those huge, floofy, blooming cattleyas. The roots are, well, can I just say, statement in comparison to the proportion of the orchid. It's just adorable. Love the Itambana. Hasn't bloomed for me, but you know, not complaining here. And here are all my beautiful Lelia Sincoranas. Lelia Sincoranas, in my opinion, are the happiest, the most easygoing, easy growing, rapiculous Lelias out there. Even though I haven't had any of mine bloom yet, but they can tolerate some serious stress and still look great. I mean, Floralia has disappointed me in the past a lot because of what I got from them and how hard I have to fight to bring these back to life. And I have lost some because I failed in bringing them back to life. But you know, this is my first ever Leia Sincorana and she came with some shipment with, you know, others that weren't looking so hot. You know, they can just take abuse, and I'm not saying abuse your rapiculous lalias, but they thrive on neglect. Not saying I neglect my rapiculous lalias either, because no way, Jose. But look at this orchid. I've had her the longest of all since 2019, I believe, and she is looking amazing. And once again, you may say, well, you're doing something wrong because they haven't bloomed for you. For me, it is so important for an orchid to get its strength before I insist on blooms. And if I see a new growth and new leaves, and that happens year after year after year, at least I am covering and doing 80% of the care right. Each orchid is getting stronger and stronger. And then the 20% to get them to bloom, to get that dialed in, is just a question of getting the right light levels for them to bloom. But strength upon strength, this makes me so happy. <laughs> okay, the next one that I got was the Lelia Sincorana variety Cerula, because why not? <laughs> and that one has developed two new growths since I got it. And you can see that I started to increase the light levels on this one last year and promptly burnt a leaf. And that is when I recognized I need to back off. I don't want to be burning leaves. I've got to figure out what time of year, when the light levels will be correct and acceptable without scorching and then getting them to bloom but that's you know the two new growths here are just amazing and this one loves producing roots it doesn't matter which one you have Sincorana love producing roots and which orchid grower doesn't love an orchid that just wants to be growing roots all the time and here's my Sincorana Nina crossed with Bella Vista look at that look at this <laughs> Funny enough, I got this year's new growth to be growing as a bifoliate, so we're still trying to figure itself out. All this stuff happening with acclimating and all that fun stuff. But isn't she pretty? Oh, I love the color of the leaves. And well, roots. Very, very excited about this Kautskiana here. For the longest time, she was doing diddly squat. Just squatting. <laughs> but I've got a new growth coming right here. Very, very excited. She looks a little bit tatty and ratty. I'm also testing the light levels on this one. You can see that didn't work out too well, but this is important, very pleased. And she is actually pot bound. So it gives me hope that in future, I can switch her over to a square pot and then leave her alone for many, many years. Whoop whoop, Lelia Harpophila has woken up. And remember when I was talking about positioning your orchid in the pot, how we should just focus on putting them into the middle. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to also link that in the description. Well, that was the time when I was thinking, where is my next growth going to come out of? Because I don't want to be bothering this orchid. There's no need. She has such a fine rhizome. But if she starts curling her way around into this area, then... <clears throat> Eventually, I will have to bother her, but we have the new growth coming out from the opposite side of the pseudobulb that I wanted it to come out of. So I'm doing light training and moving it into the middle of the pot as best as possible. Yeah, the growing point will continue along these lines, but if I can get it to zigzag in the pot, I'll be buying us some time. But woohoo, one new growth from Harpophila. Happy days. So here you see an example of why I'm being so cautious with the Sincoranas, because this orchid, this is Lucasiana, is established in my collection. And I was giving her more light levels, and you can see how much damage I did 
including singeing the pseudobulbs. Now, this can also be in combination with cold damage, but either way, cold damage, we've got black tips. Sunburn, that's right here. So that's why my Sincoranas are not being exposed to as bright light as I think they can handle because of having to dial in when it is the right time for them to get all that light. However, Lucasiana otherwise is growing well. I had one new growth for this year and that one's right here, but you know, reluctant to bloom. I just don't want to be burning any more structures. Same here with my Regina, also a pretty established orchid in my collection. And I did get some sunburn on her, even though she has been living outdoors since her arrival. Hence, yes, caution is key. Regina also bloomed for me, and then she didn't do anything for quite some time. But I've got a new growth right here. Super pleased that it's coming into this direction as opposed to the original lead being right there. <laughs> And I have another growth coming in right there. There it is, itty bitty. And I'm also pleased about that because you can see how the growth is going along the diagonal, which was planned, but it's getting a little bit close to the edge here. So I've got myself a bit more time in this pot because the lead is coming out <laughs> perfectly into the pot as opposed to now quetching up against the edge. But you see the sunburn. Here we go. Even though long, long established in my collection, just making sure I don't want that moss to be all the way up there. There we go. Moss is good this time of year, but not if it's creeping up any rhizomes. Not a good idea. I'm always checking, even though some of it has died back because, you know, summer, still, it'll always grow back. I still have three more candidates I would like to show you. So if you're still with me, thank you so very, very much. Here is Lelia Blumenshiny Eye, the one that we saw at the beginning, the little bulb that fell off on the repot. Well, here is Mama. And Mama is doing great. Look, this was the pseudobulb that matured in my care last year. And here she is growing the first one from start to finish in my care. And we've got roots in the pot. So Bloom and Shiny Eye is a solid little rapiculous Lelia. She will survive some abuse. And I'm not saying abuse within the care of the grower, but abuse of shipping, acclimating, and all that horrible stuff that they have to deal with. Because wherever we grow in the world, if we're not right there in Minas Gerais in Brazil, then <clears throat> yeah we actually put them through the stress to get them into our collection. But Bloom and Shiny Eye, so happy. <laughs> Maybe one day mommy can be with baby in one pot, but we're talking years. Because as you see, if you are new to my channel, you would say this pot is far too big for this Lelia and Rapiculus Lelias would like to be under potted as opposed to over potted. And you are absolutely right. However, my intention is let them grow in their pot, let them get all unruly and rambly and roots go everywhere. If they're not going to go into the media, I will not be bothering them. That is why I pot my Rapiculus Lelias up the way I do, to the best of my ability, given what I have available in my area. The fact that it is purely inorganic media in their pots allows me that liberty because nothing is going to break down in there. Root rot is not a biggie because even in their natural environment, other roots will thrive and get nutrition out of any debris decaying tiny matter around the new roots. So if that thought had crossed your mind up until now, there you have your answer. The Sincoranas you saw before, the first one that I got, that is just growing, growing, growing. It would be my natural inclination to bump it up a pot size right now. I am not doing that because I know that Rapiculus Lelias like to be in smaller pots. She is growing her way into the size of the pot that we like to see the proportions of. And that could take another three or four years. As long as the pot is fine, the orchid is healthy and not showing signs of stress, that I'm not able to keep up with the care and its needs, bring on the phenomenon that Rapiculus Lelias will break pots as they grow. My are plastic. We shall have to wait and see. Here's Lelia Fornieri, also one of the OGs of my Rapiculus Lelia collection. I got her back in 2019. Hasn't bloomed for me, but is doing very, very well now, getting its grow on with one growth here 
and another new growth here. This one took a long time to get established, situated and comfortable. Also have some burn. And all this happened in 2021, leading up to the winter where the summer extended itself into October and I put my Rapiculus Lelias out thinking the fall, now they can tolerate it. Turns out we had a fabulous October last year and it was still a little bit too warm to be doing that after having them protected in the shade in my blooming alley. So no matter your environment, no matter how you grow your Rapiculus Lelias, if you protect them, it doesn't matter if they're acclimated and you put them into brighter light, make that a gradual transition. Here is another one of my OGs. This is Lelia Ketiana. And oh my goodness, was I worried about this one, even though it grew some beautiful new growths right here and here. But this growth lost a leaf and that was way too soon for any structure to be losing a leaf. So I was like, what is going on? Why isn't she able to perform? And well, <laughs> you can see, <laughs> ta-da! I guess she just had a thought, well, I'm just gonna dump a leaf just for the heck of it, but oh, and I also burnt her last year. Anyway, look at this, two new growths and check this out. Ta-da! We've got some buds, which I hope won't blast now because I've moved her out of the location to film her. But if they blast, I hope that the second opportunity here will give us a visual and that would make this one a first time bloomer as well. But oh, so glad that she didn't decline because I thought if the one sunburnt leaf is gonna fail, that means here's another sunburnt leaf, that's gonna come off. You know, it's not so much if they lose their leaves, they still got their little pseudobulbs and these are resilient little creatures. So they'll be okay. It's just that first thought you have, you're going, what is going wrong here? Anyway. It was a little bit of an overkill burn and that's why she dumped the leaf. The orchid is doing fabulously as you can see, so hopefully these won't blast. So now with the glare of the sun, I can't see if this is in focus at all, but <laughs> the staging area is empty. Everybody that I've pulled, I've put back into their location and yeah, here's the reason why I love these little orchids so much. <laughs> If you have any questions, if I didn't cover something specifically long enough, if you'd like to talk more about any of them, let me know. The fact I didn't pull out 36 Rapiculus Lelias, well, <laughs> we'd be here all day and night, which would be fine by me, but I don't know if anybody's got time for that. I have 36 in total, including the doubles that I have, the Regentii, the Sincorana, but I have a list of Rapiculus Lelias I'm trying to consolidate, and there are 76 Rapiculus Lelias on there, not in including the natural hybrids that I've found as well, which are also on my list to find, collect and grow. But the natural hybrids will probably fall into my lap if I can't find the other ones first. So it's getting harder and harder for me to find the ones that I'm missing, including the replacements, because yeah, I would love to get a replacement of the Lilipotana because that is going to hurt when she goes. And I'm still looking for a healthy Ungareri because Ungareri was the reason and I placed a ridiculous Lelia order in February of 2021. It was Angerary that I really wanted. Well, apart from the Millery, but you know, mm. <laughs> we're working on it. So yeah, there's a selection. There's the update on those that are active and busy and especially those that were gifted to me. So Matt by nature, I hope this update was informative enough. And if I've missed something, you know the drill into the comments and then a community post can follow after that. Thank you to everybody that made it this far. Your time is very much appreciated. And without further ado, between my Lelia Gracilis and my little Lelia Giuliani, I bid you goodbye. Thank you so very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition though, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.